Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This channel provides full lesson content and full lesson videos on all chemistry topics for AQA, A level chemistry, and BTEC applied science. I will be uploading regular content. Initially, it'll be full lesson content, and as we get closer to the exams, I'm going to be looking and focusing on key concepts and exam technique. So please subscribe so you don't miss out on future content and also use the comments features to let me know what you think of the videos and any future videos you think would be useful. Good luck. This is a BTEC applied science video and it's for unit one and it's the chemistry assessment objective two. So you're best off familiarizing yourself with a list and I'm going to share that with you shortly. But this is the last lesson in a series of eight lessons that covers assessment objective A2. So the specification for unit one is split into A, B and C, A being chemistry, B being biology and C being physics. And for the chemistry section, it's split into two sections. There's assessment objective one and A2. OK, and this focuses on A2. This is the last lesson in a series of eight that focuses on A2. So this is the list for the year two. It's quite an extensive list, but all of this list is covered across all eight lessons. This video will focus on the very last two points in this section here. So we're going to focus on displacement reactions of metals and halogens and the uses and applications of substances within this learning aim. But I'm also going to spend a little bit of time just covering this variable oxidation state because at the end of the last video I did suggest that I would come back to this and now is a good time to do that. So we looked at what oxidation states were and the fact that transition metals, so the transition metals are found in that D block and transition metals have variable oxidation states. For example, something like manganese can exist as a two plus, but it also can exist as a seven plus. And it will quite happily move between the two. It can be forced to move from a two plus to a seven plus. And that's a difference of losing five electrons. Or in the reverse from seven plus to two plus would be gaining five electrons. And this makes them very useful for transition for um, use as catalysts in chemical reactions because they're able to transfer electrons. They will literally hold on to electrons and then they can pass them backwards and forwards moving between their transition states. OK, so that's why a catalyst doesn't get used up because it will switch between the two um, states from a seven plus to a two plus. So the idea that transition metals have variable oxidation states mean that they exist as more than one. Because we did look at group one being plus one and group two being plus two. They don't vary. Group one will be plus one. Group two will be plus two. However, transition elements can vary. They will have variable oxidation states. OK, then. So before we move on to look at displacement reactions, this links very nicely to the previous topics that we've done on reactivity series of metals. And there's our reactivity series here on the left. And it will also link into our work on the reactivity of the halogens as we go down group seven, group seven being the halogens. Now, they get less reactive as we go down. So the most reactive is fluorine, second chlorine. So it is worth knowing your order of reactivity for your halogens here. Likewise, having knowledge and use of the reactivity series for metals. So what is a displacement reaction then? Well, You've probably come across a displacement reaction way back in year seven, year eight in secondary school, and it's no different here. It's when a more reactive element will displace a less reactive element in a compound. So let's have a look at some examples then. So we're going to look at displacement involving metals. So a more reactive metal will displace a less reactive metal in the compound. So let's just say we have if I just randomly pick a metal here, calcium. So calcium is able to displace all of these other metals if they are present in compounds. So let me just say magnesium chloride. So I've picked a less reactive metal, which is magnesium. In this case, 
it will displace magnesium. So it will become calcium chloride and magnesium. Be careful, it's not just as simple as swapping places. You will have to do some work here on ionic formulae. For example, MgCl2, Cl is minus because it's in group 7, magnesium was in group 2, so it's 2 plus, therefore it was MgCl2. We can't just assume that calcium chloride will also be CaCl2. We do know that chloride is minus 1. We would then use our periodic table to determine the charge of calcium, which is 2 plus. So yes, in this case, it is CaCl2. So just be careful there. Don't just go into autopilot and assume that the formulae are the same. So don't forget all your hard work from assessment objective one when we looked at ionic substances and ionic formula. Just one further one then. I'll do a slightly more difficult one here. I'll pick zinc and I'll react zinc with copper nitrate. In fact, I'm going to change things. I'm going to make it slightly more difficult because I'm going to put sodium. OK, now the easy part here is knowing or recognising that sodium is in fact above copper. So yes, we do get a displacement reaction. So they will swap places, but we can't just switch and have NaNO3 too, because we must remember our work on formulae. Now nitrate, it was one of those ones we just had to know. Nitrate is NO3 and it's a minus one. So that's telling us that copper is in fact two plus here because we've got the two nitrates. So this links back to our assessment objective one. So sodium nitrate will be N a, now sodium is in group one, which will be one plus. Nitrate is one minus, so sodium nitrate is just NaNO3. We didn't need this, the brackets in the two here because the charge is already balanced. And yes, we would make copper. That equation is not balanced though, so that's why I'm saying this is tricky. So the displacement part was easy, but constructing the equation is slightly more difficult. So we've got two nitrates on the reactant size and only one nitrate here so we're going to need another nitrate put a two here and then i'm going to have to balance my sodiums by putting a two in front of the sodium so 2na plus cu no3 brackets 2 goes to 2na no3 plus cu that is tricky because it does involve you pulling your knowledge from ionic formulae and there was a list of ions you needed to know and i'm going to share those again with you on the next page before you do your task OK, so I'm going to remind you of the ions that you needed to know. Nitrate was NO3 minus. Carbonate is CO3 2 minus. Sulfate, SO4 2 minus. That will be enough for this question. However, there were others, such as hydroxide. We had ammonium. We also zinc was two plus and silver is one plus. That's the list of seven ions you were given in assessment objective one. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna pause the video and when you're ready, unpause and we'll go through the answers. Right, first thing we need to do is determine whether or not a displacement reaction will take place. So question one, is magnesium more reactive than aluminium? Yes, it is. It's a but. So we will get a displacement. So it will become magnesium oxide. Magnesium is in group two, so it will be two plus. And oxide is in group six, it will be two minus, so it will just be MgO. And we will make aluminium. Balancing this is quite difficult. We've got three oxygens on the left and one on the right. So I'm going to suggest we put a three in front of this. That balances out our oxygens. Now let's balance the magnesiums. I'm going to have to put a three on the left because I've got three on the right. And finally, a two in front of the aluminium. 
and that's the first one done. Next, iron sulfate or FeSO4 plus calcium. Is calcium more reactive than iron? Having a look at the table, there's calcium and iron is down here. So yes, it is. So we do get displacement. We will end up with calcium sulfate. Calcium is in group two. It will be two plus. Sulfate is SO4 two minus. So it will be CaSO4 plus iron. And that is balance. That was fairly straightforward to balance. There was no balancing required there. Question three. CuCO3, Na. Is Na more reactive? Sodium? Yes, it is. Sodium is more reactive than copper. So we do get a displacement. We end up with sodium carbonate. Sodium is in group one and it's one plus. Carbonate is two minus. So sodium carbonate is Na2. CO3 and we'll be left with copper so we need to put a 2 in front of the sodium to balance that equation. Question number 3 PB which is lead and AG which is silver. Lead is more reactive than silver so in this we get no reaction so hopefully you didn't fall in the trap here and just go into autopilot and swap them over because actually, in question four, no reaction will take place. Fe2O3 plus C. There's carbon in the periodic table, not in the periodic table, sorry, in the reactivity series, carbon is there, and iron is below it. So copper, is copper. carbon is more reactive, so it will displace. Now, car carbon and oxygen are going to have carbon dioxide. So this is difficult. It was awkward, this one. To balance it is quite difficult too, because I've got three oxygens on the left and two on the right. The only way I can even those up is a three and a two. That gives me six oxygens on both sides. Does mean I need to put a three in front of the carbon though, and a four in front of the iron. Okay then, so let's look at the displacement involving halogens now. Now, just to remind us of halogens, halogens were all diatomic. So as elements, they exist as F2, Cl2, Br2, and R2. They are diatomic. And the most reactive is the one at the top. Fluorine is the most reactive, then chlorine. So the same rules are going to apply. A more reactive halogen will displace a less reactive one in a compound. So let's have a look at an example. Cl2 plus lithium bromide. Will a reaction take place? Yes, it will, because chlorine is more reactive than bromine, so it will displace. We'll end up with lithium chloride. Now, chloride is minus one and lithium is plus one, so it is just LiCl. And we'll be left with bromine, which is Br2. So we must balance it. Two here and a two here. So we've got the more reactive halogen displacing the less reactive halide, but not forgetting that they must be diatomic, diatomic, and then we need to balance. Your turn now then. So complete balance symbol equations here. And when you're ready, unpause the video. Right, number one, NaBr plus Cl2. Is chlorine more reactive than bromine? Yes, it is. So we do get displacement. NaCl plus Br2. We need to balance two and a two. Next question. Is bromine more reactive than iodine? Yes, it is. We do get displacement. I2 plus KBr. Balance two and a two. It might be worth pointing out there that it doesn't actually matter which way around I put them. Notice how I put the I2 first here and then the KBr, whereas in question one I put the NaCl, then the Br2. There's no particular order as long as they are reactants and reactants stay on the left and products are on the right of the arrow. Next, fluorine is the most reactive, so it definitely displaces it. LiF plus Br2. Let's balance it two here and a two here. 
next chlorine and fluorine I've been awkward again because there's no reaction in question four number five chlorine is chlorine more reactive than iodine yes it is we do get displacement so we're going to get NaCl plus I2 and balance it to and a two Okay then, so the, the last bullet point in the spec was telling us to look at some uses and applications of substances within this unit. Now, I could have come up with a huge long list, but that would then maybe lead you to believe you need to know that big massive long list, and you, you don't, okay? So as long as we know some uses, okay? We have mentioned one or two as we've worked throughout the whole of these um, eight videos, but here's just a few to, to look at. So metal salts, that's what causes those colours in those sparks and fireworks. Not the explosions, it's the colours. And I mentioned earlier in this video that transition metals are used as catalysts. That, that's very common. It's most common use of transition metals is as catalysts in industry. And sulphates are also used as detergents. We've seen sulphates as a product of our metals with sulfuric acid. So... That does conclude this part of the spec then, and in fact the entirety of assessment objective two. So hopefully you're finding these videos useful. Um, you may have noticed the sound I'm hoping was a better quality on this one, because I have upgraded my microphone. So if that is the case, let me know. Or if you're still struggling with some, some of the sound, let me know. And again, use the comments to ask me questions about the videos. Use my comments to any suggestions on future videos and if that's the case don't forget if you subscribe you won't miss out on future videos because my aim is in the build-up to the exam this year that I'm going to be putting some much shorter snappier revision type videos on for you to prepare for those external exams in BTEC. Good luck!